In this part of the textbook, I describe a basic Monte Carlo simulation study where a series of one sample t tests are performed from a population of 100,000 observations. I did this for a couple of reasons, one of which is related to understanding the nature of a p value from the perspective of repeated sampling, but also to give you some sense of how statisticians discovered the behavior of various statistics and how they actually are consistent with a particular distribution, for example, or whether they can actually accommodate violations of assumptions such as homogeneity of variance, which I talk about later in the textbook. So in this case, the Monte Carlo simulation was one in which I had a data file with 100,000 cases, which is the population for this case, and I repeatedly sampled 10 cases from this population of 100,000 people, say, so that we can find out the distribution of p-values. First, I'll show you what the population mean is for these data, as well as the standard deviation. So that came in at 7.31, and the standard deviation is 1.06, and that's 100,000 observations. And as I mentioned, this is the population. It would not make much difference if I had 100 million in the population, or 1 million, 100,000, for all intents and purposes in this case, will yield the results that are to be expected, and well, that have been found across several simulation studies. So I know the population mean is 7.31 in these data, and the standard deviation is 1.06. So a Monte Carlo simulation repeatedly samples from this population of 100,000, which could be 100 million, but in this case it's 100,000. So literally selecting cases of 10, random sample of cases, exactly 10, from the 100,000 and what the computer program is going to do is it's going to randomly select 10 people. I can actually sort this with the filter, descending. And here are the 10 cases that have been sampled. Now, once I had those 10 cases randomly sampled from the population, I could then conduct a one sample t-test against the mean of 7.31. I know the population is 7.31. But with just 10 cases sampled from this population, I'm probably not going to get exactly. In fact, I got a mean of 7.50 and a standard deviation of 0.972. And the p-value is 0.552. Now, I did this repeatedly, I think a 1,000 times in this case. So actually, before I carry on, let's say I deleted the filter. And then, so these 10 people could be refound into the population and then resampled a new set of 10 people. So the 10 that were selected in the first sample, they're thrown back into the population. That's called random sampling with replacement. So I'm now going to select another sample of 10 and see how a lot of people were taken away. And I could sort cases again descending, and here are the 10 cases. And what ended up being the one sample t-test result in this case, the mean turned out to be 7.4, so a little bit lower than the 7.5 estimated earlier, and the p-value is also bigger, because it's actually closer to 7.31, so the p-value is larger, because there's less chance of a difference. So if I kept doing this, which I did hundreds of times, or a thousand times, you will get some p-values that are actually p less than 0.05, and that's just by chance. I know that there's no difference between the test value of 7.31 and the population value. Here's the test value here, 7.31, which is the population in this case. But it's finding slight differences because of random fluctuations. And I plotted those 1,000 p-values in this distribution, and I can tell you that the mean associated with that, here's actually the, all the p-values that were inputted into SPSS. I didn't actually conduct 1,000 one-sample t-tests manually. I actually wrote a little program to do it for me. And then SPSS put all the p-values into one column, and that goes all the way down to 1,000. And then I created a histogram out of that. But I also reported the mean associated with p-values. And the mean came out at about 0 0.50, 0 0.49, which is what you'll expect. 
The p-values should be floating around from lower than 0 0.50 and higher than 0 0.50. Don't be confused here. It's not 0 0.05. There were some p-values, though, that were identified as statistically significant. In fact, you can see that some of the p-values here are less than 0 0.05. And in fact, the percentage came out to be, and here are all the p-values in a frequency table. And we can see some of them, they look like they're 0.00. They're not. To de some decimal place, there's going to be a, a value. But a lot of them are very small, 0 0.01. That's because these t-tests were tested against sample means of, you know, to be honest, I don't know what the sample mean difference was to get significance here. Here's the 0 0.04. That might be something like 0 0.049. And we can see that it's equal to 5.5. So 5.5% of the one sample t-tests in this case, of a thousand one sample t-tests, were found to be associated with a p-value of less than 0 0.05, which would suggest that there's a statistically significant difference. But there's not, there can't be. This is a population of 7.31, I created the population. And I kept resampling with a sample size of 10, a thousand times, and some of the t-tests yielded p-values that were really small, which would suggest there's a difference. And that's because that's the mistakes that are being made when we consider that 0 0.05 is the magical demarcation criterion for statistical significance. But it doesn't matter what demarcation we use. Some of them will come out as what looks like statistically significant, but they're not. And we always have to be mindful of that when we do statistics, that there's the possibility of making errors. And that's, you know, by statisticians have identified 5% as the acceptable error rate. And that's a debatable thing, as I mentioned in the textbook. So that's a description of a basic Monte Carlo simulation. All Monte Carlo simulations are essentially identical to this procedure. They're just using different statistics across repeated samples.